though you have not known me, I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to the setting down that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just come before you tonight. We just thank you, Lord God, for all the songs ever sung, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that, Lord God, you are here with us right now. And Lord, we need to know, Lord God, more of you. We need to know, Lord God, the names, Lord God, the name of Jesus, your name, Lord God. And we need to apply it to our lives, Lord God, so that we may be effective out there in the world, Lord Jesus. There's a dying world out there that needs you, Lord God, and you need us to reach them, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you touch my lips. Lord God, that you clear my mind, Lord God, and clear my heart. Lord, let not my own thoughts, let not my own um, um, opinions come out, Lord God, but let your word come out through me, Lord Jesus. For I don't want to give out and speak on my own, but I want you to speak and you do the work tonight, Lord Jesus. And open up every heart, every open up every um, ear tonight, Lord God, that we may learn and we may grow and we may pursue more of you in our lives, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. And give you the glory, the honor, and praise that is all yours, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that is the way maker. Amen. That's a good scripture. Amen. Powerful word. Hallelujah. What is the next next word in that song? As Kyler was singing, way maker, miracle worker. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Back in the day, back in the day, when you wrote, when you um, read the word of God, they described miracles as signs, wonders, or power. So when it's when it's written like that in the Old Testament. It's pertaining to miracles. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go to Psalms. Let's read on Psalm 77. Psalm 77 and 14. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, you are the God who does wonders or miracles. That's like I was saying. You have declared your strength among the peoples. Amen? Amen. Miracle worker. How many of you can come up here and testify of a miracle that happened in your life? Amen. I'm pretty sure you all can name something. Amen? <clears throat> I know God has done many things in my life. My sister is right here in the second row. Wow, she she received she caught that the COVID disease, and it got so it got. She was one of the ones that was basically on her her deathbed. So I know whenever she was sent down to um, the hospital, down in the ICU, and um, my other sister was texting me saying they're, they're, the doctors it doesn't look good, Rodney. It don't it don't look good. I said she, and then later on she told me that she was in the room underneath this, under the care of one of the, the doctors there. And there was, I believe 10 there or nine there. And she was one of them. And they're all just waiting to die basically because they couldn't do nothing more for them. And so my sister texted me saying, they don't look good. I don't know, I don't know, I can see it in, I can read it in her text, my other sister. Saying that it didn't look good for her. Man, all of a sudden, this crazy faith over, overcame me. I just said, no, that's not going to happen. I started texting back. I said, that's not going to happen. She's not, it's not going to take her. You start believing right now. And you start praying and believe like you never believed before. God's going to take her back. I wasn't the only one praying for her, but 
a lot of family, you know, would pray for her. And she, what she came out of it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. She's sharing with me some things that, that she saw while she was in that that um that time. She saw evil things and she saw God, I believe. And I wish I wish I could tell you, but man. Miracle worker. Hallelujah. Amen. Our brother Andrew here. Thank you, Lord. Same thing. We all know he, he got hit by one of these poles. It flew and it swung so hard and it hit him. You know the testimony. It hit a bone and it went straight into his brain. And it was just gushing out blood. And it looked good also. Mace texted me. We were at my sister in law's house. And Mace texted me and said, Dad, so can, you, can you pray for Andrew? And then I was like, Mace never texted me for anything, for anything bad. I knew it was something bad. So he, he told me a brief story of what happened, that he got hit by a tent pole, and they're gonna fly him out. And it don't look good. And so me, um, I, I told my wife, Vicky and Kyla, we all got the oil right there, and we stood right there. So we're going to pray for Andrew, that God's going to touch him, and God's going to heal him, and he's going to be he's going to be fine and dandy. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, we weren't the only ones that prayed, but there was many others who prayed, and now look at where Andrew's at Amen. today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Come on. Miracle working. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What is the next thing after Miracle Worker in that song? Promise Keeper. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to numbers. Amen. Numbers chapter 23. Verse 19. It says there, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. He has said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Amen? Amen. He has said, and will he not do? No, he will. Or has he has spoken, and will he not make it good? He will make it good. Amen. Amen. He is a promise Thank keeper. You, Lord. He does not lie. Thank you, Jesus. When he says he's going to do something, Amen. he's going to do it. Hallelujah. It don't matter who's there. It don't matter what any people say. No matter what the circumstances are around you. If God's going to do it, if he says he's going to do it, man, he's going to do it. There's, there's nothing you can do or say anything about it. Amen. Amen. He is a promise keeper. And what is the last of that, that chorus? Light in the darkness. Amen. Let's go to first John. First John is starting chapter one and verse five. He says there, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. God is light. Amen. And there is no darkness in him at all. Thank you, Lord. He is 
the light in the darkness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like that song says. Amen. So when you sing that chorus and you've got these scriptures down, that song has power behind it. It's not just something that sounds good, but there is power behind that song. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And these are all names pertaining to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And all this happened before Jesus, before Jesus was even born. But God did something for you and I. God did something for, for us. Amen. He did it in John 3.16. Everybody knows John 3.16? What is it? God so loved the world, gave us only got his son. Amen. Amen. God, for God so loved, for those out there that didn't hear, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who is who? Jesus. That whoever believes in him, whoever believes in Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Power in that scripture. Sometimes we read it so much, it seems like it just gets repetitive. But there's power in that scripture. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's go to John 12 real quick. John 12, in verse 46. This is Jesus here. He says there, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Amen. Jesus said, basically saying, I am the light of the world also. Doesn't the world seem so dark right now? But Jesus is the light and he needs us, amen, to proclaim his name out there, amen? But why? Let's go back to that question. Why is there so much power in the name of Jesus? It's because, remember I was saying there's characters, the people had um, did things, like I was talking about Hitler and COVID, there's things that happened that pertain to that particular name. Jesus, amen, he did three things happen in his life to where when you say the name of Jesus and you know and these subjects are talking about him, we know exactly who, what, who he is and what we're talking about. One is his, his birth when Jesus was even born. Two is his death when he died on the cross. And three was when he was resurrected back from the dead. Amen. His birth. Let's go. Let's look at. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter two. I mean, there's a lot of scriptures, huh? Is that okay? Amen. Hallelujah. But like Bass was saying last night, you know, we hardly. No one hardly reads their word as much anymore. Only when they come to revivals or church. But we're in church tonight, so we're going to read a lot of scriptures tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Luke chapter 2. Amen. And let's start with verse 7. <clears throat> okay, this is his birth. And she brought forth her firstborn son. This is Mary, right? And wrapped him in swaddling clothes cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to be all people for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord 
that's his birth. Amen. Amen. Such a wonderful time, you know, when it's Christmas time. Amen. It's when we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. It's right around the corner. It's coming up. Amen. Hallelujah. And then as he lived his life, he did things, he did miracles, he did wonders, he did teachings, healings, he did many things, amen? Amen. Till it came to a point where he was put up on a on a tree, on a cross. And we all know that story. He didn't even have to do that. But he did it for you and I. Amen. Amen. He shed his blood and didn't even say a word for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Some of us don't even deserve it, but He did it for us. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 15. I can't see because I got tears in my eyes. <laughs> Mark chapter 15 and verse 33. Hallelujah. He says, Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, Lama, however you say that, that word. Do you know how to say it? Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he's calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine, put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and he breathed his last breath. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The veil. Amen. Amen. You all know what the veil is, right? Amen. That's when you really had to sacrifice the, the animals for your sins. But, you know, God took care of that because he sent Jesus to die a sinner's death. And that veil was torn in two to where you don't have to do sacrificials, you know, rituals, killing animals anymore. Jesus did that. So that we have straight access to the Father through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's easy as that. When you call on Jesus' name, you have access to the Father. Hallelujah. Then the last event that Jesus did was the resurrection. Amen. Let's go to Mark 16. And we'll start with the verse 1. He says, I now... When the Sabbath would pass, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him. They come and anoint Jesus because he thought he might stink, amen? amen. Because he was he was in there for three days in the tomb. So they thought that he was gonna um, might smell a little bit. So they're gonna anoint him. And in verse two, it says, very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, who will, walk, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away 
for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. So they went out quickly, fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Amen. Amen. He is risen. Amen. He wasn't there anymore. Hallelujah. His body was there, but then he's not there no more because he was he rose from the dead. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And let's go down a little more on the same, just jump down to verse 14. This is Jesus. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they didn't believe that, that he had risen from the dead. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name... They will cast out demons. Amen. They will speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Amen. They will lay hands on the sick and they Amen. will recover. Amen. Jesus said that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So why are we not doing it? Amen. I'm not talking, I'm talking to myself too. First, why it's right here. God needs me to do this more. Amen. Amen. Let it drop into your heart. You need to do it more. Amen. Amen. Instructions from Jesus himself. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Share your testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Share a song. Hallelujah. Tell them that Jesus is alive. Tell them that Jesus saved me. I was once lost. I was on, on my way to hell. I was once, I once died and came back to life. I once was on my way to go to jail, but that he made a way for me Thank to Lord. not go Amen. to jail. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell them out there, they need them. Just like when Mace was talking about when Samuel Harris, he, he built a strong, strong foundation here, a legacy to where that church, it back, I don't know when it started, but I remember I hearing how much people were just so hungry here for the word, amen? How many people were coming in early just and praying and just hungry for the things what God was doing. I'm pretty sure healings were taking place. I'm pretty sure, you know, salvation was taking place left and right. And the teachings were what this, what Jesus was instructing them. To lay hands on the sick. To believe in Jesus' name. And everything that was said, it was according to his word. According to his purpose. It was being done there. Amen. Amen. So with, from that generation down to their kids' generation. Down to their kids' generation. Down to us. <laughs> down to the young kids that are out there now. What happened? Thank you, Lord. What happened? Somewhere along the way, we got lazy. Amen. Amen. Somewhere along the way, like May said, they don't want to read no more. They don't want to pray no more. They don't want, want to witness no more. Then what happened to that? We have to be standing strong in the Word of God and be example for Him. Amen. Amen. When you see people out there that see you, you want them to see him, not you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, whatever comes out of your mouth and how you treat people, you want them to, as if God is speaking to them directly. Not your own self. It's pretty hard, I know. It gets tough. Why? Because the devil is out there to steal.
steal, kill, and destroy. He don't care if it's your mother. He don't care if it's your dad. He don't care if it's your best friend. He don't care if it's your brother in Christ, sister in Christ. He'll use anybody. If you give him a little inch to move into your heart, he's going to barge his way in and he's going to have his way with you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you corrupt and you allow him to, to, to do things that God doesn't want you to do. Amen? Amen. So but along the way, those generations, you know, we got lazy. Parents let your kids do whatever they want to do. Right. Parents let their kids run around late at night, don't care where they're at. Drops them off at school. Here, you guys take care of them. I need a break. That's your responsibility. You take care of them. Amen. Teach them the word of God. Amen. Teach them what's wrong and what's right. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because whatever's being taught to them right now, something wasn't, something was told that it's all right to do drugs. Somebody told them it's all right to go ahead and drink and party out there. It's fun. Somebody told them it's all right to shoot guns out there. It's not right. Somewhere along the line, we lost the power of the name of Jesus in our lives. Amen. And we need to get it back. Amen. Amen. I hate when I see the... the the news when I see nothing left or right to, like what happened on, happened in Texas, a shooting in a, in a mall, a killing down the road a, a, you name it at the end times it's near and it's happening right now but if something if God was to do something tonight how far would that go let me use this as an example Bigfoot, how's how that name amen <laughs> If somebody heard, heard or said they seen Bigfoot over here at the Again Bridge tonight, how how fast do you think that would spread around around the reservation? <laughs> Everyone get all excited and ooh, you know, wow, is it is it really real? But if if someone was on the deathbed and they brought them here and they were actually going to die, then we lay their hands on them and they come back to life. How, how far would that spread around the reservation? Hallelujah. Amen. A miracle would take place here. You see what I'm saying? Amen. We need to be so, we need to get hungry for it for God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Start, I, I'm talking to myself first. Amen. I just encourage you to want to do the same. Continue to come and receive and take heed of what's been brought forth here on the word of God and apply it to your life and be the light in the darkness out there. Because there's a dark, dark uh, world that is dark and people dying left and right. And Jesus needs us to touch as many people as we can before he comes. He is going to come. We don't know that no one knows the time. No one knows the, the, the date. It could be right now for all we know. Hallelujah. Amen. It could be tomorrow. It could be next year. It could be 10 years. It could be 100 years. We don't know. 200 years from now, we won't even be here. Hallelujah. Amen. But back then, what did they say in the, in the Bible? Jesus is coming soon. They said it that when Jesus was still alive 2,000 years ago. Jesus is coming soon. All those 2,000 years to 2023, we're still saying Jesus is coming soon. So we don't know. So the, the moral of that story is keep doing what you're doing. Telling people he's coming soon. So be ready. Stay ready. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God might need you to, to do something tomorrow for him. During service, after service, you might need to go visit someone. He might even tell you to, to go go um go to somebody's house that hasn't been to church for for a few Sundays or all. Go to their house. They may need a miracle. They may need to hear something from you. Amen. Amen. Stay ready. God needs us. 
God needs us to, 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 to work together. Amen? Amen. Not to, not, to quarrel, not to fight against each other. Talk about each other. Amen? Amen. Like I was saying, you know, Bob is having a, a service down there. Pray for him. Pray for his helpers. God is doing what he's doing right now, bringing forth the word. There's a, somebody down there bringing forth the word. It needs to be effective to the people down there also. Amen. God is, wants all people to receive him. Amen. Amen. I always share that. You know, like I remember, you know, God, I don't even deserve it. I, don't even, I shouldn't even be standing here. I should be dead. I should be in the, either six feet under or in the prison, one or the other, for sure, guaranteed. But yet, he had grace enough to save me so that I can continue to sing and, and now share the word for him. Amen. Amen. I didn't even think I was going to know how to do this. I, I, I still don't, you know, I was so shy and I was so, so scared to look at people and, and, and stand in front of people. Some of you may even feel like that. But the ministry that God gives you may not have to be back here. It could be behind the scenes. It could be at the pop stand. It could be um, picking up trash. God needs you everywhere. Amen. Amen. And He loves you just the same as He loves the ones that are standing up here behind the pulpit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in Jesus' name, hallelujah, we go out there and do the works of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Did you receive something tonight? Amen. I hope you did. Amen. I know, I know when I was reading this, God, reading about the parts, like just like tonight, it just, the word is just, man, it just gets emotional because I'm real, I know I shouldn't be here, but God, man, God just means so much to me. And I love him. And I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to share a song. Amen. Share a song.